Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, March 20th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A number, a huge volcanic uptick worldwide. We have the 13th paroxysm over at Kilauea with lava fountaining to 700 feet. And Liwatobi Volcano in Indonesia, a major eruption sending ash to 53,000 feet earlier today, including pyroclastic flows. We also have an eruption at Etna and a lot to talk about. Keep calm. It's boom time. Well, it's spring, ding, ding. The uh, spring equinox occurred earlier today, Thursday, March 20th at 3.01 a.m. And well, now the days will continue to get longer. As Omaha Metro is recovering from a blizzard, many are still impacted by power outages as of this morning. We had 50,000 without power in Nebraska. Let's refresh this. And there are still 31,000 plus without power in that state. How much snow fell in Minnesota on the March 19th blizzard? Well, that wasn't really the big story, the snowfall. It was the power outages, road closures, and major pileups. But I do digress. They did, in fact, pick up nine point pile. 9.5 inches in Bryceland, 8.5 inches in Chatfield, 7.8 inches in Dakota, 7.6 in Fillmore, 7.5 in St. Charles. Pretty significant totals there, but those totals pale in comparison to Iowa. Areas of Iowa picked up over 14 and a half inches, including Lakota, 12 inches in Ledyard, 11.5 in Algona, and 9.5 in Fort Dodge. In fact, 10 million were under winter weather alerts this morning on the first day of spring, ding, ding, after a blizzard and tornadoes pummeled the Midwest. With all these atmospheric rivers causing these disturbances, let's take a look at the water storage level across California's major reservoirs. In fact, it's in record territory unseen in years. The daily percentage of storage capacity across 48 of the state's major water supplies for January is well above average for this time of year, according to the Department of Water Resources. Statewide storage is 115% of normal as of Tuesday. And here's the full forecast. Critical fire weather in the southern high plains and eastern Florida peninsula. Pacific storms impacting the northeast. Gusty winds and dry conditions will continue to produce elevated to critical fire weather over the southern high plains and eastern Florida peninsula. There are locally critical fire weather areas along the Gulf Coast and the northern plains. Two Pacific storms will impact the northwest U.S. with heavy mountain snow and low elevation rain into Saturday. Frost and freeze warnings out for the southeast. So heed the warnings and cover your sensitive crops. You can see those pink regions where high winds may spur wildfire breakouts and winter storm watches and warnings sporadically through the Rocky Mountains. Quick look at the GFS model shows snow through April 5th uh, with the Northeast looking to be the big winter chicken dinner as well as the West. Look at some of these totals, uh, four feet or more. Let's take a look at what's going on on the GFS model. That storm will move off the coast tonight and into tomorrow with more snow coming into the Northeast as another system hits the Pacific Northwest. That will, it's a moderate system a light spattering uh, for the northern Rocky Mountains as it bombs out here at the end of the weekend, Sunday into Monday, across the northern tier. Nothing really significant there. Normal spring weather. As we watch system after system, pepper the U.S. A quick look at the total snowfall expected. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday morning, there are your snow totals. Light snow for the northeast down the Appalachian spine there. Could be picking up one to three inches. Maybe areas of western PA picking up five or six inches. Areas of the Adirondacks as well. 
The big winner, chicken dinner by Monday morning, will be the northern tier. Minnesota and Wisconsin could be picking up eight inches to a foot. And in the west, we could be seeing three to four feet for the Cascades, as well as uh, the northern mountains of Idaho and heavy totals for western Wyoming and Colorado. We'll move the models through here because they get kind of weak next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Next weekend, we could be seeing some heavy systems moving through the northern tier as well. We'll keep a close eye on them as the models develop. The global warming goodness certainly isn't over, and Al Gore can suck it. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We do have a moderate uptick of quakes across the world. Yeah, there we go. Especially the U.S., but slight uptick in earthquakes worldwide, nothing significant, which is good news. As Hawaii's Kilauea volcano resumes its dazzling lava show today, good news, I woke up early and was able to live stream the entire event over on our Rumble channel at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, 12 hours and 37 minutes with spectacular lava fountaining up to 700 feet one of the most spectacular phases of the entire eruption, which began Christmas Eve. How do you like them apples? Support us on Rumble at Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, two separate channels. Now, the big story today is Liwatobi Volcano in Flores, Indonesia, a massive eruption with pyroclastic flows and a very high ash plume. A very strong eruptive phase began at the volcano at 12.30 local time and is still ongoing at the time of the update. The activity of the volcano accelerated at 22.56 local time and produced a tall ash column rising 8 kilometers above the summit, drifting to the west and the southwest. According to the local volcano observatory, the volcano... Uh, Volcanic Ash Advisory Center in Darwin issued a warning to aviation about an ash plume rising possibly even higher altitudes up to 53,000 feet, which is approaching the stratosphere in this location. Strong incandescent visible on webcams highly likely suggest the presence of a new lava flow, deposits from glowing rock falls as well. The activity produced glowing avalanches known as pyroclastic flows that descended the volcanic flanks, reaching 3.3 kilometers distance from the summit. Such gravity-driven flows typically form when lava is rapidly being deposited on the steep slopes and collapses into turbulent avalanches that can travel many kilometers and destroy everything in their path. We haven't seen an eruption like that in quite some time. Well, maybe even since Honga Tonga. The rest of the erupting volcanoes for March 20th include Nevada de Ruiz to 19,000 feet, Semeru puffing and passing today, Dukono to 7,000 feet, Liwatobi, a secondary 10,000 foot puff there, White Island uh, activity has ceased there, Santa Guito to 13,000 foot today, Ibu puffing and passing, Dukono to 7,000 foot, Liwatobi to 10, Santa Guito to 14,000 foot. Conleon on the list today, an eruption was reported. Liwatobi, another puff to 20,000 foot. Here we see some amazing activity from Etna, Strombolian activity. Wow, that's making me hungry, and it absolutely looks delicious. We discussed the Liwatobi 53,000 foot blast with pyroclastic flows just moments ago. Semenu on the list. Ibu as well. And we can see here Naya Moragira volcano in the Conga today. Lava Lake remains active. Impressive images from Goma City as the eruption continues, illuminates an impressive steam plume rising from it. Absolutely spectacular. Ducono to 7,000 feet. New volcanic ash at Raventador, Santa Guito to 14,000 feet. Liwatobi to 50,000 feet wraps up the list of mind-blowing volcanic activity for the day. Hey, hey. Oxygen discovered in the most distant known galaxy ever. 
Two different teams of astronomers have detected oxygen in the most distant known galaxy, Jade's GSZ14-0. The discovery reported in two separate studies was made possible thanks to the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, in which the European Southern Observatory is a partner. The record-breaking detection is making astronomers rethink how quickly galaxies formed in the universe. Now, Jade's GSZ14-0 is the most distant confirmed galaxy ever found. Its light took 13.4 billion years to reach us, and according to current cosmological theory, uh, this galaxy was just 300 million years old as the Big Bang had just occurred. Um, so why would there be oxygen present? Well, probably because the standard model of cosmology is garbage. The universe is infinite and has been around forever. Well, and scientists are stupid. Speaking of stupid scientists, they just unearthed a 44,000-year-old Pleistocene wolf preserved in Siberia's permafrost. We also have mammoths perfectly preserved from 44,000 years ago, several of them. So clearly something catastrophic occurred 44,000 years ago up in Siberia to catastrophically bury these animals in an instant and flash freeze them in perfect conservation until we find them today. In fact, in a rare and captivating discovery, researchers have uncovered the remarkably preserved remains of a 44,000-year-old wolf found deep within the permafrost of Yakutia in eastern Russia. This stunning find provides a rare glimpse into the world of the Pleistocene epoch, a time when wolves roam the vast foreign, frozen landscapes. Their presence marked the fearsome teeth that remain intact today. All the articles will be linked below. Have you heard? There could be billions more people in the world than we think. This is a groundbreaking study. The new study reveals that there could be billions more people in the world than currently thought, as populations in rural areas have been significantly undercounted. Are there 11 million, perhaps 12 billion people on Earth? Well, possibly. According to researchers, they compared widely used population data sets with resettlement data from rural projects and found discrepancies ranging from 53% to 84% in rural areas. That means we could have 11 or 12 billion people on Earth when we only think there's 8 billion. The inaccuracies stem from difficulties in conducting censuses in remote or conflicted areas, which are all over the world as we speak. What are your thoughts on the topic? Leave a comment below. Now, capturing the thoughts and minds of people across the internet, this image is moving around the interwebs, coming from pretty some pretty suspect sources. Now, what they're claiming is that a new form of tomography has detected structures beneath the Great Pyramid at Khafre in Egypt, extending kilometers below the surface, which appear to be batteries. The only problem is the paper is public access, has been updated multiple times. The paper title is called Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography Reveals Details of Undiscovered High-Resolution Internal Structures of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Well, but within the paper, there are none of these structures. The paper doesn't show anything below the surface that we do not already know about. So I don't know where they're getting this picture or this graph but the paper that they claim it came from does not have any of these pictures or graphs. In fact, it doesn't show anything other than what we already know about the Great Pyramid of Khufu. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share the video. 
And don't believe everything you see on the internet. People have been duped time immemorial. And the more fantastic a discovery seems, the more bullshit it probably is. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. I hope that this is true, but there is not a single link or shred of evidence for this picture. And that's just the facts, folks. Mm -hmm.